Happy Women's History Month. I know you are loving our fellow sisters every month of the year. However, today, Improper Mimi is celebrating black women being empowered in all walks of our life, at home, work, and play. I'm your host, Mimi Jax, and today I'm sitting with Sinead Chapman, founder of Nerdy Diva. When I tell you that this woman is amazing, I tell you no lies. From working in big tech to founding a black woman-owned business that helps tech startups grow, Shanae is all about empowering women, investing in our businesses, and identifying inclusive diversity for women in tech. I am so excited for this Improper Mimi conversation. And I am going to let Shanae introduce herself. Why don't you also tell us a little bit about yourself and also what it is that you love so much about what you do? Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I love empowering women and, and thank you for reaching out and giving me space to share about my business, Nerdy Diva, and what's going on uh, with our business as we continue to grow and evolve over time. Uh, so my background is in user experience. I have been uh, a UX researcher and designer and strategist uh, for over 10 years now. So I started out um, in big tech um, in the Boston area, which is where you and I met through uh, NSBE, exactly. National Society of Black Engineers. <laughs> uh, and I started my career um, at IBM and Red Hat and um big companies that had enterprise software and uh, I was doing testing and learning the um, agile software development process. Uh, also was studying at Northeastern University for my master's degree in informatics. So I learned a lot about information systems, took classes in usability, understanding how uh, systems are perceived by people. So really into that cognitive psychology and that fusion between interaction of systems and the psychology of how people think and making tools that are easy for them to use and find information and get things done and have less frustration and less issues and <laughs> less cost for customer right. support. So that's really <laughs> what I, I love about user experience is um, helping people get things done and helping them spend less time um, in their applications and then they're able to spend more time with their family, with their friends, doing the things that they love oh, yeah. to do. So that really interests me. And um, I created my business, Nerdy Diva, in 2018. So she is three years old and out here Yay. growing and expanding. And Nerdy Diva focuses on the lack of diversity in the tech field. So we do a lot of workshops and training on inclusive design and accessibility nice. best practices. Also uh, mm -hmm. partner with small businesses and uh, founders for social innovation projects. So we work with uh, different organizations that are building our research and building out designs for prototypes, um, connecting uh, college students and small business owners, often from underrepresented communities. And lastly, we are angel investors. So we invest in women-owned, Black-owned LGBT owned companies as well to make sure that we are uh, distributing uh, funding and help alleviating some of the pain that uh, founders who are underrepresented face in trying to fundraise. Oh, wow. Yes. So you guys see that we have a very smart guest with us today. <laughs> yes. And definitely, you know, someone who's very interested and passionate about um, how technology impacts our yeah. community, you know. Um, and I, I think that's so important because, as you say, like, sometimes people just don't even really think about how they interact with technology, mm -hmm. you know, like that there's someone designing how this how the interface looks you know how yeah. how it relates to us or how it doesn't relate to us like how um black women and you know people in the black community are even considered in in that design of putting it together um absolutely so, yeah right yeah and so i i love that you your company nerdy diva is so diverse in that the different things that you're trying to um achieve and how you're working with people even working with you know like you said college students or even mm -hmm. um people who are starting their own companies um how did you kind of find that experience of getting into it i know you said that nerdy diva has been around for like a few years now um, did you see that need 
like in your um, corporate, you know, like I'm assuming like you came from corporate and then went into you're like, you know what, I'm going to do this on my own. Like there's a need here that I need to fill. Yeah, definitely. So I, I worked at um, big enterprise mm-hmm. companies um, mm-hmm. like Boeing, IBM, uh, et cetera, and definitely learned a lot and worked with global teams across the world, building uh, innovative uh, products and systems mm-hmm. and, you know, really understood a complexity of how it uh, actually you know, in the day to day, how do you operate when you're coordinating between different teams across the world? Um, but knew mm-hmm. that there also were gaps. There were gaps in really um, being intentional at times about making sure that we had um, diverse participants when we did research um, and yeah. making sure that we were having accessibility standards. And these are things that came out of the work that I had in corporate. And I realized that this is good for corporate audiences, but this also can serve small businesses and startups that don't have this information and this data. Mm -hmm. And it's important to share that not only with the big companies, but also with the founders and with the small businesses that are starting out as well. You're right. Yeah. Because I know like a lot of companies are trying to um, think of like ways they can diversify, whether Mm -hmm. it's hiring, you know, diverse people on their staff or whether it's, you know, through supplier diversity where they're trying to interact and hire more companies that are either black or women owned. Um, So, yeah. So making sure that those companies have the tools that they need in order to succeed. I think that's that's excellent, too. That's really getting the information out there. (laughs) And one thing that we talk about a lot about empowering women is that empowered women empower other women, you know, so so like, you know, some of these companies that, you know, you're working with and helping them to strengthen um, how they're presented and how they can gain business. That's, you know, and, you know, keeping it going forward, helping them as well. Yeah. And, you know, that that really is something that has uh, been so important throughout my career. I was blessed and so grateful that I started my career at Red Hat uh, and at IBM. Like those were the first positions I had um, in my technical career. I was an intern at Red Hat. I had a woman as a manager and you don't have that all the time. And then when I had my first full time position at IBM, I was surrounded by brilliant, talented women in leadership at different levels of the company, black women, white women, Asian women, Latinx women. And Mm -hmm. the idea that this is normal, that, yeah, there's supposed to be women (laughs) in leadership. And I was like a 20 something year old and I just was not aware how different it can be at a lot of tech companies where you only Mm -hmm. see men, you only see white men, straight white men. And leadership and it's so important that we have that diversity that we have that um, live experience and we have those perspectives of people from different backgrounds to help make our workplaces and products and services more equitable right yeah and even like in my day job you know i you know i say you know like we we met the nesby you know black engineers and i say oh yeah i'm an engineer like when i fill out a survey but I'm not like a hardcore engineer. <laughs> and that's you the know? diversity of the field too, that you can transition right. to like project management or business analysts or all kinds of different roles in technology. Exactly. Yeah. Because now I'm doing more like PMO stuff and, and working with AI. And I'm like, I have no idea about the user interface except for being a user. And I'm like, okay, well, can we get this? Which can is important. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I got that input going in there, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, there's so many different, um, like you say, so many different roles that are involved and wrapped up in technology. When we talk about, um, trying to make technology more inclusive. Mm -hmm. Um, And I wonder if you have any kind of insights there on like, like you, like you had so many people around you that kind of made it like normal that, okay, there are women in technology, black people, you know, diverse people, various people in technology. But then when you look at the technology field overall, there's even less, you know, um, numbers of of black women that are in technology and so i'm just kind of wondering like what can um and you know technology is such a broad 
umbrella, but what can I do to really be more inclusive um, to make it a field that is welcoming to more um, people from various communities? Yeah, that that's such an important question. And I think like really being intentional and really making sure that there are resources and support for women, people of color, uh, mm-hmm. people from marginalized groups who come into these workplaces. So the idea of having a cohort, so having a group mm-hmm. come in um, at the same time that they can lean on each other and share information as new hires, but also um, as people from uh, underrepresented groups so that they, they have that support mm-hmm. system. Um, what I've seen work well at companies, a lot of bigger companies do this. And, and in fact, it's something that smaller companies should consider as well having those employee resource groups, having Mm. funding for those groups, having executive sponsors that are involved and go to those meetings and share information and listen and collect feedback from the people who uh, often don't uh, get heard at the company and whose numbers are low at the company. And really think about how do we capture uh, what our diversity metrics are today and think about what are some good outcomes and goals for the next two years, five years, right. and yeah. have those long-term plans. So if we know that um, Black women, you know, uh, as an example, are less likely to be in technical leadership, and we know mm-hmm. that Black women are less likely to be in technical positions, what can we do to create more access and opportunity and support for Black women who would like to transition to these roles and make an yeah. environment where they feel supported and respected and heard. And when they bring up issues, that that is being held uh, into consideration and the company is being accountable for them. Yeah. And that's so important because I'm all for the the ERG groups and um and for networking and connecting, you know, I often tell people like, oh yeah, I'm a connector. Like, oh, I know this person and another person and you two would be great together. Um, but it's important for those those BRG groups also to, to share those metrics or for mm-hmm. the company to share the metrics with the BRG groups. Because sometimes, you know, like I've been in various um, like, you know, corporate corporations as well. And um, for them to have a, a ERG or BRG group where, um, you're bringing like, um, you know, dynamics or, or um, groups together, different demographics together. Um, but they may not always have that power or insight into what the company's metrics are. So the company may say, oh, yeah, we're trying to increase our diversity. But then um, they are, it may not be for your specific group, you know, it may just be for overall. And, and you may not even know what what those numbers are. So you don't know if we improved from two years ago or not. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and I always encourage people to ask the question, you know, so yes. if you're, especially a, if you're job searching, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, because that's the other thing, like you mentioned of um, making sure that the companies have the support network for their diverse candidates to be successful. So yes, as you're interviewing with companies, ask them, you know, ask them, you know, like, okay, so yeah, about how many, you know, people of diversity do you have in this department or, or what are your plans or what are your goals for achieving, you know, um, maybe more diversity next year, you know, um, those kind of different questions, at least kind of give you a little insight um, in addition to the people that you're talking with and interviewing with, um, or even giving proposals to as well. So, yeah, no, that's really, really informational and good for people to know. I know you mentioned also earlier, um, not only just inclusive design, but also um, angel investing. So maybe you could tell us a little more about what um, Nerdy Diva um, does with angel investing or um, how you encourage that like in the different ways that you work. Yeah, definitely. So uh, angel investment was something that, Uh, was on my radar um, as part of the Diverse Business Accelerator uh, here in my hometown in St. Louis. Um, The Chamber of Commerce created this program for supporting uh, diverse businesses, minority-owned, women-owned businesses, and giving them the opportunity to grow and expand their operations and have 
phenomenal speakers and mm-hmm. resources to help with um, some of the things around like uh, operations and legal and marketing and growing your team and value mm-hmm. proposition and really um, having that information in a concrete way and being able to brainstorm new ideas and also um, come up with um, ideas for pitching to investors. Mm-hmm. So we mm-hmm. pitched, we had um, a program where we were uh, meeting on a weekly basis for three months and we pitched mm-hmm. every time that we met. So getting really comfortable with sharing what your business is, what problem mm-hmm. you're solving and who you are going to help and asking, asking for what you need for your business and being mm-hmm. able to do that in a succinct way and um, get to the heart of the matter um, so that people understand your goals and your motivation and how they can help you. And I, I was very much um, impressed with um, that that type of um, asking for um, investing and realized, mm-hmm. you know, this is something I definitely want to learn more about. Um, I'm a big fan of Arlen Hamilton. She's the founder of yes. uh, Backstage Capital, mm-hmm. and she does a lot of work with um, increasing equity in uh, VC funding. And mm-hmm. she... Um, has been someone that I followed over the past couple of years, and she had um, an opening for her investing as a catalyst training program. So nice. I debated back and forth. I was like, oh man, do I really <laughs> want to spend the money going yeah. to this training? And I had the funds in my business. I had been, um, you know, increasing revenue, and I knew, you know, in order to do the work that I really want to do in the community. I have to train. I have to learn as well. Yes. So investing in the business, taking that course, uh, learning from Arlen Hamilton and her team wow. about what they know and what they've learned over the mm-hmm. years about angel investing, about VC funding, about setting up vestibules yes. and what are the pros and cons of that and understanding that terminology. A lot of it hadn't heard before. Right. So hearing that for the first time and Arlen actually came to those sessions and she uh-huh. walked us through all the information. She brought in guest speakers from her network and mm-hmm. it was an amazing time to really understand how does this actually work in Silicon Valley? What are those things that are happening in those deal rooms behind mm-hmm. closed doors? And what are some of the barriers that we know exist? How can we create more opportunities for access and opportunity for people of color, LGBT women who often don't get that funding. So that's something I'm really passionate about and have started creating one, just a a plan of action, having a thesis. That was Mm -hmm. the the capstone of the program um, through Arlen Hamilton, creating your investing thesis. And my investing thesis is centered around making sure that underrepresented founders are able to have funding and doing that in a way that is uh, a testament to my background in technology. So technology-based companies, making a social impact, positive social impact, Mm -hmm. uh, focus on women as well, and um, people of color and folks in the LGBT community. So I think that's really important that we're making sure that folks are um, getting the resources and getting um, the visibility and acknowledgement for the work that they are doing, the yeah. folks who are often marginalized, folks who are often kind of pushed to the side, mm-hmm. and um, the folks, honestly, who have to, it seems like, do twice as much to be seen and to be heard. So making sure they have um, more access and more uh, capital to fund those dreams and projects they have. Yeah. And that is such important work because a lot of times, you know, people may have ideas and they may, you know, finally get around to starting their own company or doing something on the side, but for them to level up and to go to that next level and to understand what it is that they need in order to get to the next level, it does take education. You know, it does take you know, finding out um, what grants are out there, what programs are out there, who can you market to, and and how are you going to fund this? You know, so kudos first to you for oh, taking it you. to yourself. <laughs> you know, so that you can you 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 did the, the the program that you did to to get that information and to not only get the information and keep it for yourself, but to share it with others so that you can help others to grow. 
And, and I love, you know, like, that's why I love doing a podcast, you know, when I get to talk to people and learn about what it is that they're doing. And even when, you know, you like kind of look up people and you're like, okay, that sounds cool. This is what they're doing. You learn a little bit more, you know, when you just have these conversations. And um, I just love sharing stories because it lets other people learn as well. So not only did I like, okay, yes, this is what you're up to. And, and that's another level to it, but you know, now other people can learn and hear and, um, you know, we'll definitely make sure everyone has your information when we come, you know, come to the end and make sure that everyone can get in touch with you. They know all about Nerdy Diva. If they have any questions, you know, like so that they can further, you know, their businesses as well. Yeah, definitely. I also want to highlight uh, the two businesses that have invested in uh, in the past uh, year. Uh, The first one is Curl Mix, based in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, Husband and wife team that creates uh, natural hair products. I got Uh, some in the bathroom, actually. Oh, Mm. good, good. (laughs) So they have a a great e-commerce platform and they've been doing great work. So um, that has been one of the companies we've invested in. Also, a mm-hmm. uh, St. Louis-based company, actually someone I went to college with, uh, uh, Cherise mm-hmm. Lero. She mm-hmm. has a documentary film company, and she has created a documentary specifically on Black women's mental health called Black Girl mm-hmm. Blue, yes. and have invested in supporting her work so that she's able to get the licensing needed in order to show that film on Netflix. Oh, look at this. I love this. I love yes, learning, getting yeah. more information that we could put down below also for people to, to follow up on. And I know myself personally, when I listen to a podcast or read a book and it refers to something else, I'm like, ooh, let me go look that Absolutely. up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So I yes. hope people t- take a look into those other companies as well and, and learn about what they're doing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and I think we also even mentioned like um, social innovation and how i guess within technology and diversity like how we can like bring this to more people or even maybe i should let you let me know like social innovation like how is that um, integrated as well yeah you know it's it's really that concept of technology for good so a Mm, technology mm -hmm. that is helping to make a positive social impact um that is helping people um achieve their goals and dreams and is uh, relevant to uh, the communities that would use those uh, those technical systems. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, partner with organizations like Focus St. Louis is a, a civic leadership organization that had um, different projects within the greater St. Louis community and worked on creating mock-ups and prototypes for a platform that would share information about COVID-19 resources, Mm -hmm. financial uh, literacy and training, uh, job opportunities uh, for the 21st century, and having those resources all in one platform for people as they are trying to understand ways that they can grow and ways that they can feed their families and ways that they Mm. can stay safe as well. So that's an example of one of the uh, social innovation projects that we have. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I have been hearing a lot about how um, different um, organizations and technology are looking at how it's impacting, you know, maybe the black community and how, how people within the community can impact technology, you know, so how if we recognize what we're using and how we're using it, we also could impact how that is shaped around our needs as well. So it could be, like you say, information gathering or information sharing. Like in New York, New York is huge. And Mm -hmm. to get information out to the various communities, it does take, you know, coming with some new ideas of like, okay, well, how are we going to reach people? You know, you may not reach people in all of the communities by using the same um, outreach, whether it's, you know, radio or TV or, you know, uh, community newspapers and posting things. Or even text messaging. I've seen um, yeah. the SMS uh, messaging as a, another way for civic leaders to get in touch mm-hmm. with their communities as well. And Twilio has some really interesting um, APIs for developers who want to yeah. share messages via text and, and get across to a, a greater amount of people as well. Yeah. 
That is, yeah, that's really interesting. And, and slowly but surely, I'm learning more and more about APIs, you know, mm-hmm. just even from exposure to them and, and giving, like I said, like giving my feedback on them at work, you know, but then just realizing like things that you may come into contact with throughout your normal day that you don't even think about be like, oh yeah, yeah. Somebody did have to like design mm-hmm. this. Right. We're using APIs all the time, all those integrations. <laughs> There's some yeah. API hooks going on. Yes. Yeah. Whether it's your cell phone or the ATM or the self-serve and, you know, Rite Aid or something like that. There's, there's, things are not just by happenstance. There's like a, 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 a method and a, a reason and someone designed this, you know. Um, excellent. And then what do you even think about like... Um, how or what are ways that we can get more um, women of color or just more diversity, period, into um, that kind of design, like that user experience kind of um, design? Yeah, there's some great organizations um, that have been really encouraging and supportive throughout my career, and I highly recommend them for uh, people who are interested in user experience as well. Uh, UXPA uh, is a international based organization that has chapters yeah. across the US and uh, across um, multitude of countries as well. I'm a member of UXPA Boston. because That's where I went to grad school. And that's where I um, started growing my UX mm-hmm. network. They have a phenomenal newsletter where they share information and resources. And they have some good um, virtual webinars happening. Also, uh, mm-hmm. also would recommend um, the UXPA international uh, website they have resources across all of the chapters so you can find Mm -hmm. information there also ux her is an organization that was created a few years ago by a black woman uh nandy manning and Mm -hmm. she has it as a resource for specifically black women who are interested in pursuing careers in ux so it's a great platform for people who are interested in ux uh Mm -hmm. to share about their journey and ask questions and also for people who are more senior level like i am to share resources and um, answer questions and provide some mentorship as well Uh, And then lastly, um, for UX, I would say definitely um, get in touch with uh, people who you uh, think have interesting careers on LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. following them on LinkedIn, following Mm -hmm. them on Twitter. Um, I have people message me and ask me questions about careers and happy to answer those questions. So definitely, um, you know, stay in touch with folks um, and follow what they're doing in a career and the types of organizations that they are collaborating with. And really that networking is a very um, big big. key Mm -hmm. to um, understanding um, how to apply um, UX to uh, actual uh, day-to-day work and it can be very different from what you read in an article or in a book right. or in mm-hmm. a class. How do you actually apply it working with senior stakeholders, with engineers, with product managers, with business executives? How do you uh, negotiate and uh, share your ideas? You're pitching. Right. So you're pitching mm-hmm. your ideas. How do you do that <laughs> successfully? How do you do design reviews and um, give constructive feedback and um, Mm -hmm. have ways to take that in and uh, use it to help influence your designs and your decision making. So all good things. Um, Darren Hood is a a prominent Black man in UX doing his thing. And he also Mm -hmm. has a podcast called The World of UX. So Mm -hmm. definitely would uh, recommend folks follow him there as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then um, he and I were in a book recently uh, published by O'Reilly, 97 Things every UX practitioner should know. And that's a great resource. Uh, It's an anthology with many amazing people across Mm -hmm. the UX research and design and content writing and strategy uh, perspectives to Mm. share their knowledge and their expertise. So those are a slew of the resources. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, so people out there, you can't say like, if this is something you're interested in, or you've kind of thought about it before that, these are some great, you know, resources to jumpstart and to learn about and to find out more information. And I am very big on like mentorship and 
um, networking. So definitely like take some of that, you know, information under advisement, um, learn more, learn as much as you can. I, I, I don't care how old I get. I'm probably always going to be learning, always going to be always. interesting about something. Yeah. Yeah. You always want to kind of just keep your brain sharp, you know, mm-hmm. and, and <laughs> find out more information about things you're interested in because, you know, many times people just have an idea, but putting that idea into motion and sharing it with someone and getting that feedback and like, okay, yeah, so this is, might be the next step, you know, that I can go to with this. And, um, that's how you kind of make it happen. So don't be afraid to reach out, to connect with people. I love LinkedIn for that too. And mm-hmm. articles, because when people post articles or even when you read something that you've found interesting, I may even reach out to that person and say, Hey, thanks for sharing this information. I'd love to like keep in touch, or maybe we can have a little coffee connect, you know, just maybe like a little conversation, um, whenever they have time so that you can, um, just express your interest and appreciation to them and and then just kind of keep in touch with them. Yeah, absolutely. Newsletters are a great way to stay in Mm -hmm. touch with different people and and organizations that you find interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nerdy Diva has a newsletter. Uh, We have over 500 people on the newsletter list now. So we're growing um, every day and we share relevant content about inclusive research and design. Uh, mm-hmm. information about social innovation projects and also mm-hmm. angel investing in underrepresented communities. So definitely check us out for, for more about those resources as well. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Get on the newsletter if you're not already. Um, and we'll have all the information below also where you can find everything you need to know about Nerdy Diva. And even like in the newsletter talking about things that you have done or that um, Nerdy Diva has done and being in articles like I saw like the New York Times recently you know so and you know these are like good achievements and good ways to share information about what it is that you're doing and information about what people in our community are doing too like the companies that are working with you Um, so I love to see it so yeah so why don't you tell us you know where can we find um, more information about Nerdy Diva and any upcoming projects or um, events that you have coming on? Yeah, uh, you can find out more at nerdydiva.com. We also are on Twitter at Nerdy Diva Design and also on LinkedIn. Um, We have an Instagram page as well. So we post uh, on all of those sites uh, when we have updates, when we have new newsletters. Um, Mm -hmm. We are in the works of building out an internship program for the summer. So definitely follow the newsletter if you have any interest in uh, applying as an intern. And also Mm -hmm. if you have any interest, if you are a small business owner, if you're a startup founder and you want to have some interns come and work on some projects for you, we're also looking for companies to partner with for those social innovation projects. So definitely keep us in mind. Um, We have workshops coming up this year uh, with different universities and with different um, organizations uh, covering inclusive design, uh, also um, covering uh, salary negotiations and negotiating for your business. And that was a lot of the focus of the New York Times article. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's very important, especially for Black women um, Mm -hmm. who often are paid less and often, um, you know, definitely don't have opportunities to advocate um, Mm -hmm. to make sure that you are asking for what you deserve. And every time that you have uh, opportunities to uh, negotiate for salary or for your business, that you are asking for what you really think that you deserve and Mm -hmm. that you are making sure that you are setting yourself up for success. Because Mm -hmm. if you don't do it, then you're going to undercut other Black women who come behind you. So making sure right. that you're setting a good tone. And yeah. I always say like, I advocate for myself and also advocate mm-hmm. for the black women that came before me who didn't have those opportunities. So my yeah. mother was a, a preschool teacher. My grandmother was a cook in a restaurant and you did not have a lot of opportunities to negotiate in those positions. So exactly. I take that information. I take um, my ancestors' experiences with me. And I'm saying, Mm -hmm. hey, that ends with me. We are here to take everything that is ours, claiming it. 
Yes, yes, that is strong. That is empowering. You know, that is really good information because if we only look out for ourselves, then it dies with ourselves. It doesn't continue on. It doesn't help the next person. It doesn't help my daughter. It doesn't help my nieces, you know, so looking out for each other really does help us all out in, you know, in the long run, you know, we're training these companies on how they need to, to deal with and to acknowledge our work. And I would want the very same for my daughter, for any other young lady out there. Yeah. So wonderful. So Shanae, I appreciate you again. Thank you so much for coming and spending time. And you really did drop a lot of like knowledge and gems with us. So there's going to be full of information that people can follow up and listen to. And, and y'all definitely sign up for the newsletter. So you know what's going on in technology, you know what's going on with Nerdy Diva. And you're going to find out about so much more because like we just said, we're talking about negotiations and um, all different ways that women can, you know, take control of their careers, their companies and other companies that they're working at. So thank you, Shanae. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. And yes, all about this empowering women and making sure that we're living full lives. Be sure to like and share this episode with other women in your life who may be interested in technology or even starting their own businesses. If you want to keep up to date on the latest Improper Mimi shenanigans, be sure to visit ImproperMimi.com to join our mailing list. That's it for now, podcasters. Remember to protect yourself and give yourself space and grace. As always, keep telling Black stories. Ciao!